Radio Row in the Mall of America. This is the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, the Jersey, back in New Jersey and also reaching into Philadelphia. We're here for the big game, of course, between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots. And now joining us, CBS NFL Today and Good Morning Football. That's Nate Burleson. Nate, great to see you. How are you? I'm good, man. Good to be here. Well, you come to Radio Row. You dress the part, of course. It's like you're on TV or something this morning. <laughs> and uh, you got the cigar. Man, I, I'm, I'm walking around. I'm seeing my people. I have a lot of friends and family here. And my guy, Bob, from Vancouver, he's like, you know what? I got a cigar for you. I'm like, what? So uh, <laughs> I got a cigar in my pocket right now, and I don't think you can smoke in here, but I might celebrate a little bit later. Well, we need to get to Kyle Brandt because oh. in our area, Kyle Brandt, people genuflect, and they go, all hail Kyle, all hail Kyle. I do it on the show all the time. It's unbelievable how he's much he loves the birds. Well, listen, he, he, first of all, he's an absolute genius. Those rants he go on, um, you know, he's, he's forced me to step my game up. I tell him all the time, iron sharpens iron because I walked in as, you know, a typical analyst. I'm still working on perfecting myself and what I want to be as a TV personality. And the way that he writes, um, it put me in a position where I had to step my game up, be clever, uh, you know, be a little bit more engaging in how I'm telling the game and telling stories. And that's what he does so well. But, yeah, damn right, he loves the birds, man. And he, he can sell anything when it comes to the Eagles, and I'm all in on it. I do a show with the Princeton football coach, so uh, yeah. Bob Saray. So, yeah. obviously, he went to Princeton. Did he grow up as an Eagle fan, Kyle? Oh, you know, Kyle grew up in Chicago, so you know it was it was Chicago Bulls and Chicago okay. Bears. But you know what? It seems like he's from the area. On the show, we respect greatness, and I, it was a moment where Carson Wentz reached out to him on Twitter because we did something funny, and Carson reached back and they tweeted, and then they direct message, and from there, Kyle was like, you know, he's my faux best friend, so I'm going to forever be an Eagles fan. <laughs> We're talking to Nate Burleson right now on Radio Row. This underdog story, I know people get caught up in, all right, it's the Patriots versus the Eagles, or it was the Vikings or the Eagles, yeah. and everyone's saying the Eagles are going to lose. But I look at it at a different angle. Yeah. I look at, it at the guys on this roster and also the people that constructed this roster. Howie Roseman, we did show after show. Why the heck is Howie getting put back into position? Right. They already did him once. It didn't work out. Why is he coming back? Uh, Doug Peterson. Why does he get the job? They, they could have went with someone Who else. Was that guy? Someone more qualified. Yeah. Right. And then you look at this roster. It just goes on and on and on. Nick Foles now in position. Uh, Patrick Robinson wasn't even supposed to make the team this right, year. Right, right, And this underdog team, I think it has something because of the fact there's so many people on this right. roster that were told you can't do it, and now they're doing it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not just some stick, right? You know, we – it's I real. Think people thought initially, oh, they're just doing it to try to grab on something. Every team has a chip, and this is their chip. But no, no, when you really think about what they've been able to do, and it's a cast of misfits, Nick Foles. You know, people forget the fact that when he was an Eagle, he had that amazing year when he was working with Deshaun Jackson and he had LaShawn McCoy running back. And I came on TV and I was like, no, no, the Eagle's going to be fine. And I literally got laughed at. And then I looked on Twitter and people were lighting me up, nature out of your mind. Carson Wentz goes down, he was the MVP. And Nick Foles, you think Nick Foles at all people? I said, yeah. Think about the talent surrounding him now versus when he had that amazing year, 27 touchdowns, two interceptions. They're better now. And then people really had to think, and it was a group of misfits, and that's what the underdog mentality is. It's a group of guys that you didn't think were going to be there. That was either shipped, moved, wasn't picked up by the team they were with. Alshon Jeffrey, Chicago, it's the number one guy. They get rid of Brandon Marshall, and they don't keep Alshon Jeffrey. by shock. Eagles come along. We got you. Earn your keep. One year deal. Torrey Smith, absolute burner. Free agency wasn't good to him. Eagles said, no, no, we got a place. Nelson Aguilar, who people say, you know, it's time. Let, let's, Trust me. Let's get rid of the dude. I, I was the biggest Nelson Aguilar critic. And when yeah. I saw him on uh, media night, I walked up to him. I said, man, I was completely wrong about you. But it was all confidence with him. Yeah. Because in the he summer got his head. At, at OTAs, I went up to him. I go, how are you going to be different this year? Yeah. How are you going to get over a drop in a game? Yeah. And he goes, I just don't have time to fail anymore. Right. I have to be great. He and, understood. And from that quote, I knew he was going to have a good year. And, and, and that quote right there could pretty much sum up this Eagles team, right? I don't have time. I don't have time to think about all these reasons why people don't think we can win. We have to be great right now. That's what Carson Wentz did. He was like, I'm going to go out there and do everything I can. Nick Foles came in. He said, I'm going to show everybody. I'm not just Foles gold. Like, I'm the real deal. Bruno Mars, 24-karat magic, baby. <laughs> I like that. Uh, with Nick Foles, though, I was at the Raiders game. Yeah. And I'm sitting there. I'm going, uh-oh, this team's in trouble. Yeah. Then you saw the four drives up against the Cowboys. I know Torrey Smith had the drop. Right, it's an irrelevant right, game. Right. But he didn't make you feel good after the four right, drives. Right, right. 
How did he turn the switch to play the way that he did up against the Vikings? You're going up against the number one defense right. in the National Football right. League, and they obliterated them. They dismantled that yeah. defense. You had wide receivers running down the field. They were wide open. They had 20 yeah. yards to run. Yeah, I, I told everybody not to panic. Uh, you know, they, we were talking Don't about panic. the end of the season. Don't panic. <laughs> Don't panic. And like, look, there's a difference between the end of the season, Nick Foles playing in meaningless games and the playoffs playing in meaningful games. And – that's what he understands. These games have much more meaning. Not that, you know, he wasn't trying, but it's a completely different game plan. You're going in with coaches saying, let's give a vanilla product. Why would, at the end of the season, when they're basically trying to keep their quarterback, their second-string quarterback, from getting banged up and going in with some elaborate game plan, they went in with a – Matt Burke, one of the best guys in the business. It's uh, all right. Uh, so he, they, they said, you know, let's be vanilla. Let, let's keep it granola. Let's go into the postseason – and then we'll unleash the beast. And that's what they did. Last, last week, they had a combination of everything. They had the RPOs, the screenplays, the going deep, the trick plays. They pulled out all the stops. Like, this is the version of Nick Foles we need to see, but not just Nick Foles. This is the version of the play call that got them to this point. And you need that aggressiveness up against the New England Patriots Facts. because in the NFC Championship game, 30 seconds left, you're up in the first half. Doug yeah. goes, no, 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 we could go get three points, and they did that. Doug Marone, that? on the other hand, had two timeouts, and he said, talk about it. I'm going to go into uh, halftime and be okay. Talk about and it. right there in that game, I said, man, Marone is not being aggressive. Doug will be aggressive up against the pass. Right, looking back at that Jags game, you thought to yourself, if you guys just go out there and you don't take your foot off the pedal, you guys can go get yourself a win, and you'll be in Minnesota. Pats will be going home, but they didn't. And on the flip side, the Patriots, ultra aggressive pulling out all the stops. Man, we're digging deep in this bag, and we're about to empty this thing out like Santa Claus on Christmas. And the, and the Eagles did the same thing. They went out, and they're like, all right, get points, we'll get points, and we'll keep stacking it on top of each other. And we're talking offense, but you got to give credit to that defense too. Flying around, hitting guys, and that's what's going to be the difference. I feel like Foles is going to be just fine. I feel like the wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, of course, I think the best tight end core in the business, they're going to step up. But how can those guys – keep those running backs for the Patriots in front of them because Amendola is going to have a few catches that are going to shock everybody. He's a playoff superstar. What's up, baby? You good? And what's going to happen, what's going to happen is those running backs are going to get involved and you have to fly around and hit these guys before they even get started. And that's going to be the difference. I know you got to run. So last one with Nate Burleson before we let him go, this defense of the Eagles, we know how good they are, just yeah. like you're talking about. The Patriots, I don't know if you could stop the pass rush, but Bill finds a way to contain it. Dante Skarnecchia finds a way to contain it. How do they do that on Sunday? And then give me a prediction before we let you run. The, my prediction is that they're going to try to bring pressure, and I'm talking about unleashing blitz and stunts up front to make Tom Brady uncomfortable, but it's, it's easier said than done. The, the average pass rating is like 87% in the NFL. Tom Brady under pressure, his pass rating is 96, almost 10 points higher. When he's under pressure, these other guys are averaging 87 when they have a clean pocket. So saying that you get to Tom Brady, it's going to be the No, nah, it's not the case. Tom Brady has the most composure of all times. But going back to my prediction, if the Eagles get ahead, they could blow out the Patriots. If they make it a close game and Tom has the ball in his hands, the fourth quarter, four minutes left, he needs a drive or two to win the game. I'm not betting against Tom Brady. What is it like for you to watch Brady and Belichick after all these years? It's like watching the Bulls. It's like... The stories of the Celtics I used to hear with Bill Russell in those 11 championships. It's like watching UConn's women's basketball. It's watching uh, John Wooden in UCLA. It's every dynasty I've ever watched. Like I'm witnessing greatness, and I, I can appreciate it. I can tell you, I can talk football with you all day. I know you got to do 10,000 interviews. Nate Burleson, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks so much. We'll take a break. It's the Zach Yelp Show, Fox Sports 920, New Jersey.